This is the Open University. University. Here I am in Paris and the sun is setting. It's beautiful. Uh, and every day, you know, uh, it, it's beautiful here in Paris. And I, I traipse around uh, being a flaneur, looking at culture. And I like to talk about culture. It might not get huge ratings here on YouTube, but I, I think it's kind of useful. It's useful for me, just if, if nothing else, to Google some of the things I'm photographing. Uh, this, for instance, is uh, Michelle Lamy on the cover of a magazine called System Beauty, seen at OFR bookshop here. Uh, quite scary image, but uh, also very uh, interesting counterpoint to the Madonna kind of plastic surgery uh, scandals recently. Uh, this is what you look like when you haven't had plastic surgery when you're about that age. Actually, I think she's in her 70s, Michelle Lamy. She's the partner of Rick Owens, the fashion designer. Is a little bit over valued by uh, Parisian fashionistas uh, with his all-black outfits. He's a, an interesting guy. I find his interviews very interesting, but uh, I don't like his fashion very much. He lives in a, an all-black house, of course. Um, Come stai? This is a, this Gaetano Pesche, who does uh, design and art for, uh, in this case, Botania, Botelia Veneta. Uh, Come stai, of course, means how are you doing in uh, Italian. And all these, there's lots of different covers of this. Um, it's uh, It looks like just something spilled on the cover of the book, but in a very aesthetically pleasing way. Um, these cassettes, by the way, are uh, from an exhibition at Yvon Lambert of um, Coco Capitan, who is a Spanish artist and fashion photographer based in London. And she had a big show at Dailim Seoul in 2018, uh, there is actually, talking of cassettes, going to be a, a release on cassette of the Momus Vivid album from 2020, my COVID album. Um, it's going to be the first release of uh, Utopia Unearthed Records, which is uh, based in Nashville, Tennessee. It's going to be a cassette of Vivid. Um, this is me. My friend Babis came to visit, uh, my Greek friend from university, and this is me sporting a present he brought me from Athens. There is a museum in Athens called the Momus Museum, the Museum Alex Mylona who is a, a female modernist and a pioneer of modernism in Greece. Uh, and I, it, whenever people call themselves Momus, they're kind of my rivals because I don't want there to be too many Momuses cluttering up the world. But of course, you know, I named myself after a, a god who was not trademarked. So um, I'm happy to use this bag. Though I haven't actually <laughs> haven't used it yet. Um, this is um, Le Bon Marché. And... Um, Actually, the, the 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 sort of igloo that um, Noemi is sitting in is part is an installation by um, Subo Gupta, an Indian artist uh, who did uh, wanted to interrogate uh, the spectators of this exhibition about their pilgrimage uh, through a society axed upon consumption. So he he used a department store to make this interrogation. Um, they had a Philip Catherine exhibition before, uh, at the end of last year, in this same space. Uh, that's the outside of the igloo there. And um, this is my image of Le Bon Marché. Uh, there's actually a um, an exhibition coming to Tokyo, which is also a book, which was here in Paris. I saw it here in Paris. It's coming to Tokyo uh, soon. It's called uh, Accidentally Wes Anderson. So I took a, an image of the outside of Le Bon Marché store because it looked like a Wes Anderson set to me. Um, when I was there today. Uh, and actually, the, um, the Bon Marché, which I first visited with my mother in like 1976, it was the uh, setting and the inspiration for a novel by Emile Zola in 1883 called Au Bonheur des Dames, The Lady's Paradise. Um, but to me, it looks now like a scene from a different fiction, which is The French Dispatch, the last film of Wes Anderson, of whom I am a fan, uh, I have to say. Um... Gombrowitz, this is another book from my local market, and this is, a, in English, it's called The Possessed. Um, it was a novel he wrote in uh, 1939, uh, the Polish writer, of course, Gombrowitz. I love Gombrowitz. I love the sort of weird rituals he, he dreams up. Um, 
This was published under a pseudonym and it's a pastiche of the Gothic and serial novels uh, written by people like Horace Walpole and Eugene Sue. Uh, I haven't read it, I have to say. A lot of these things I haven't read. I have read, uh, of course, George Bataille's History of the Eye, Story of the Eye. This is uh, a Jughead jug, since we're not just talking about books, also ceramics, um, seen at the Conman store. In fact, all these things are from... Um, a boutique called the um, Vaisselle Boutique in Paris, and they work a lot with Conran. Uh, back to books, though. Um, this is Gertrude Stein's Three Lives, and this was a novel which, uh, well, three kind of inter interwoven uh, fictions, The Good Anna, Melantha, and The Good Lena. And they're kind of experimental fiction from 1909. Uh, they're all really about people who emigrated from Germany to... Um, Bridgepoint is what she calls it, a fictional town based on Baltimore, where she comes from herself. Uh, actually, two of, the, two of the women were servants, housekeepers and things, born in Germany. The middle one, Melantha, is a mixed-race woman. And um, a lot of these things, I just take photographs of them and don't buy them. For instance, this, I love, I love the cover of this with its tape. <laughs> it's a bit of library kind of um, sticky-back plastic. <laughs> Um, and it's uh, Peter Hanke's novel from 1987, Absence. Uh, it's an allegory which follows four nameless people, an old man, a woman, a soldier and a gambler, as they journey through a desolate wasteland beyond the limits of an unnamed city. And Hanke filmed this in 1992. Uh, and it was seen as... Uh, I think the reviews at the time said this was rather pretentious and wandering film. So I don't think it did big box office. But none of this stuff does. Uh, that's the kind of the nice thing about it. Here's Beckett uh, laughing. Funny man, um, in a, a local bookshop near here. Here's Volva Viking, which is um, uh, 15 euros, and it's uh, by Elizabeth Peake, and from 2005. And the potted uh, summary of that is, Fun Girl is turning her life around. She's got a new job slinging corn dogs and has snagged a date with a handsome influencer. But when things get steamy, her pelvic pumps prove a little too powerful. Um, and... Um, this uh, this was a present from um, our friend Sikong uh, Geisha, Momus Geisha Coffee uh, from Panama. Uh, haven't tried it yet, haven't drunk it yet, because it was very, very expensive. I'm almost scared to, to crush the beans and drink it. But it's agroforest cultivated, and it won the Brewers, the World Brewers Cup five times, this coffee. It's a natural marvel with delicate floral overtones, it says here on their page. Momus Again, another Marmus, <laughs> um, a coffee company. Um, the Museum of uh, Musée des Arts Décoratifs here in Paris uh, was having a big exhibition about 80s design, which was really interesting for me, quite resonant. Um, and uh, this was an, a secondary exhibition. Etienne Robial, who is a graphic designer for Canal Plus and M6 uh, TV networks. Uh, this is his... Um, some of his slide rules and things, his uh, drawing tools. Um, and he um, he also did some magazine designs for Metal Hurlant magazine, Telerama, and Les Inrocuptibles, which is the main, or used to be the main rock magazine here, but then it kind of went more mainstream culture. Um, this is a little corner of a, a select shop uh, called... Um, um, Broken Arm, The Broken Arm, and it's uh, run by Dreaming Man Cafe, a Japanese-owned cafe. And uh, that's a nice place, a sunny terrace to sit on sort of boxes, plywood boxes outside uh, in a, on a sunny afternoon. Um, this is um, <laughs> a, a sort of Cliff's Notes version of Racine's Andromaque. I like the way these things are... Um, customized by bored pupils. And this one, um, well, I mean, the original play of on, on, on Andromaque is a, is a verse tragedy in five acts written in 1667. And the plot is Orestes loves Hermione, who loves Pyrrhus, who loves Andromache, who loves Hector, who is dead. There you go. You don't have to see the play now. Um, this is a special of a literary magazine called Lark, and it was from 1974. This um, number 56, and it's about Bart. Bart, at that point, had just six years to live because he was hit and killed by a laundry van 
1980 at the age of 64. It actually took him one month to die of his chest injuries, uh, which is reason enough to ban all vehicles from central Paris, which I, I think and Hidalgo the mayor is trying to do very slowly, but much too slowly. And um, Bart's Mythologies, which is a fantastic collection of essays about consumer um, craziness, uh, he, he actually um, compared, he has an essay in there comparing the new Sichuan, I think it was the Diane, um, to a medieval cathedral. And we'll come back to Bart a bit later in this narrative. He pops up again. Um, this is uh, me eating a Japanese sandwich, a sando, as it's called in Japan, egg sandwich and a tuna sandwich in a place called Benshi, which is excellent, a new uh, kind of jazz, Japanese jazz cafe run by this very dapper man who's also a style consultant, a Japanese um, style consultant. And it's um, Benshi can be found in the 50 Cherche, Rue du Cherche Midi uh, in the Sèvres Babylon area of Paris. And um, more little weird indie places. This is a, a magazine shop called Cahier Central, which also does coffee, uh, just espresso, I think. It's at 12 Rue La CPD. Uh, and for 20 euros a month, they offer you a sort of subscription service where you can select a different independent magazine each month and they'll mail it to you. I uh, haven't actually done that, but I, I kind of like the idea that they choose. It really is a select shop in the sense that they select for you. Um, this is uh, a Nathalie saint book from 1968 called uh, Between Life and Death. It's about a writer who's the central character and she's trapped between the social death of seclusion required by the act of writing and the quest for approval by the living, the ones who surround her, read her works and judge them. And it features on the cover Paul Clay's um, 1928 um painting Sinbad the Sailor which actually is quite resonant for me because it hung on the wall of my house when I was a child in Ainsley Place, Edinburgh. Uh, I guess it stands in for my father who is Sinbad in this case, uh, spearing fish, my father an angler who published many books about fishing, William B. Curry. I think, I don't know if any of them are still in print, I wonder. Um, where can we go from there? Jean Nouvel, um, this is a view from uh, Montmartre, from the Sacré-Cœur, uh, the steps in front of Sacré-Cœur, and you can see East Paris really developing. This is a new uh, tower, two new towers, actually, the duo towers uh, designed by Jean Nouvel in, and inaugurated in 2022. They're near the um, Mitterrand Library. Tower number one is the second highest building in Paris after the Tour Montparnasse. And um, this is an exhibition at the Gallery Continua, which is a very multinational gallery. It's got branches all over the world, including in Dubai and Beijing. And this is the Paris uh, branch, and it's showing Moataz Nader, Nazar exhibition. He's a 61-year-old Egyptian painter, sculptor, multimedia artist, and self-proclaimed cultural activist. And... Um, this is a coffee shop in Montmartre. I took, took a, a day trip with Naomi to Montmartre, where I used to live in the 90s, in my 30s. Uh, this is a place called Clove, which I'd recommend. It's very good coffee. It's on a little uh, side street uh, called Rue Chap, 14 Rue Chap. And while I was up there, I took the time to pose in front of uh, my old flat. Uh, let's see if I can point out. Yeah, I used to live... These two windows were my windows basically right next to the um, Sacre Coeur. And um, let me see. Uh, this, is, um, this is a bit of sort of espionage because uh, Denis Lavant, the actor, who's, um, he, he, he plays the lead character, stand-in for uh, Leos Carrex in the t first two films by Leos Carrex. Uh, and he obviously lives really close to where I'm living in Paris. So I see him a lot at this market, always sifting through the books. He's actually appearing uh, currently in um, Beckett's Endgame in a theatre in Montmartre, since we're talking about Montmartre. You see how much material I've got to get through in this. Oh, well, I, I, we'll come back to Danny Level and my birthday. Um, oh, my God. Where are we? There he is. OK, there's Danny Level. These pictures, these three here, they're all taken in a... Um, 
a new cafe, which is a Taiwanese tea shop, very cultivated. It's not sweet tea. It's actually sort of classic tea. It's called Chao Ru, uh, Ru being wheel. Uh, and they do wheel cakes, delicious custard-filled wheel cakes, Taiwanese tea and wheel cakes. And that's at uh, 3 Rue du Montmorency, uh, Montmorency sorry, in Le, in Le Marais. This is a new branch of Lightsay, which does both coffee and tea. They've got other branches which do just tea and just coffee, but that one does them both, and it's actually a nice place. Oh, it's Paris d'Abang is another another of these places. Uh, yeah, here's um, Noemi at Paris d'Abang, which is, um, I think it's run by the same people as Plus 82 Cafe, a Korean um, bingtsu and tea, and that's at uh, 6 Rue de la Folie Mericourt in the 11th arrondissement. And um, this is uh, this is a really nice bookshop we just discovered called Liberi Sans Titre, a bookshop without a, a name. And um, it actually um, has, well, this is something, I think it's by A.V. Ter. It looks like the artwork of A.V. Ter. I'm not entirely sure. They've got such a, a select kind of, an interesting selection of books. For instance, Les Daronnes, this is The Moms, uh, I think is the English title, by Yong Shou Ma, who's born in 1982, and it's about some kind of 50-something Azumas, <laughs> Korean mothers, based on actually the artist's own mother. Um, he, he gave her a notebook and asked her to keep uh, just just notes of what her life was about. <laughs> and so um, this is really about um, a mother of three children who's now single and employed in a cleaning company. She's got a lazy son, a mafioso boss who's anti-unions, a womanizing alcoholic lover. And uh, it's so it's an anthology of toxic and hopeless characters. Um, his next novel was called Artist and was twice as long and looked at sort of toxic masculinity in Korea. But um, really great selection of books in uh, in this place. This Notes on Evil by Stephen Warwick um, surveys examples from cinema, music and politics and looks at the mechanisms by which societies construct enemies in a collective bid to expel their problems, inverted commas. Um, so it's about uh, scapegoating, essentially. Uh, this is a book about um, the art school system in, in France in the 60s, which I keep seeing on these tables, the second-hand tables. Here, as you can see, we've got... Um, Yayoi Kusama, uh, this is a, an animatronic, a robot version of Yayoi Kusama, who's the world's most successful female artist. Um, although uh, Yoko Ono might um, dispute that, perhaps. And um, she's taken over Vuitton. And um, everything's this kind of schizophrenic polka dot <laughs> pattern. Uh, this is me photobombing Denis Lavant again. We we now we see him. We recognise his cap. We can see him from our flat window. Oh, there's Denis' cap, you know, bobbing about like a boy on the sea. But it's a sea of uh, fantastic literature. So um, this is a. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. This is a hen basket in a, a shop called Petit Pont, which is mostly children's uh, design stuff. I actually sleep under a duvet from Petit Pont. And these baskets were sort of popularised in the 60s by Brigitte Bardot, but they, they're old Scottish baskets, and they were used to um, uh, carry broody hens from croft to croft, apparently. Here's a book I, I wish I'd bought, actually. This is not a novel and other novels by David Markson. David Markson was a postmodern experimental novelist um, who died in 2010, and many of his books feature literary and artistic anecdotes listed in non-linear, discontinuous and collage-like collage -like assemblages. Um, after being in Spain, where it was pretty warm, uh, it's like 15 to 20 degrees, we're back into quite a cold, windy and wintry, but very sunny Paris now. It's been, for the second half of February, it's been um, rather chilly, especially with the wind factor. This is a kind of... Um, uh, co-working cafe called uh, Nomad, which we sometimes go to as well. You basically have to take laptops when you go there. Uh, and my laptop has a MoMA sticker from the MoMA's Museum. This is a MOOC. Relax was, it doesn't really exist anymore. This was a one-off. Because Japanese magazines, when they go out of business, they keep the title and they, they sell it to advertisers and call it a MOOC. So this was Relax, which was a magazine house publication, which I actually contributed to in 2002. I think they bought 
four pages of my photographs at Tokyo for an astronomical sum. No wonder they went out of business. Um, and I really kind of fellow travelled with them because their office was in Nakamegaro when I lived in Nakamegaro, etc., etc. So anyway, it was nice to see that in um, in um, Chukudo, which is the Japanese bookshop in Paris. Um, this is a uh, a graphic novel by a Taiwanese again art, artist uh, Li Chin Lin, who, it's called Formosa, which is the old name for Taiwan, of course. Uh, she was born in 1973 in rural Taiwan, but she's lived in France for the last decade. And this is really the story of her. Uh, as you can see, she's being stifled by militaristic types, the story of her upbringing in uh, Taiwan. And um, let's see, uh, here is a, this is a present, uh, birthday present for a friend uh, from Papier Tigre, which has branches actually in Seoul and in Tokyo, as well as in Paris. It's kind of like a, a upscale RT stationery shop which we like a lot and we like the wrapping and stuff. But this was a jigsaw by Yuji Yokoyama, who I love, you know, really uh, my favourite manga artist. I mean, it's kind of autistic and surreal manga. And um, there was one in the same series by Bastian Vives, uh, who's a very famous and very controversial um, cartoonist, I suppose, not cartoonist, um, graphic novel maker, uh, who's actually preparing for an upcoming obscenity trial for his 2018 graphic novel Petit Paul, Little Paul, about a kid with a huge thing. Uh, Paul, the summary is, Paul lives in the countryside with his father and sister Magali. Um, he's what you might call precocious, although he's not yet old enough to understand it. He's endowed with a formidable attribute that is difficult to hide. This is Amazon being a little mealy-mouthed here. Uh, he's got a big one, basically. And it triggers the most violent impulses in the chaste women around him. On the family farm, with his friends or in class, our poor little farmer finds himself propelled despite himself into absurd situations. So this um, has been a kind of witch hunt against this title. But a lot of artists and uh, people, commentators, are standing up for Bastien. And, um, so, uh, but, but his jigsaw has been removed from uh, Papier Tigre. <laughs> um, this is My Husband, which is a book of um, photographs, uh, six by six format photos from the late 70s by Tokoku Ushioda. Uh, in early 1979, she moved with her husband Shimao, who's also a photographer, and her child Maho to a simple box like room on the second floor of a, an old building and, and had a shared toilet and no bathroom, not even a fridge. Um, so she started taking photographs of her daily life and uh, this is a um, very good uh, uh, book. And um, this is, uh, I like floors, as you can see. This is a floor in a new branch of the coffee, which is a cafe chain with extremely minimalist values. I think this was hidden under, when it was a, it was a buggy, a pram shop, before it was a cafe. And before that, it was a plant shop. And in each case, they had these horrible kind of fake wooden boards covering this ceramic floor. Uh, another ceramic floor up here, this is in Le Peloton, which is a cycling cafe in Le Marais, uh, which I go to occasionally. This is Kawabata's novel, uh, bought on the market again. It's um, 1,000 cranes. It's about sex, suicide and banging your dead father's mistresses. Ugly passions seethe beneath an exquisitely uh, perfect aesthetic surface. And... Um, this is me in uh, a bakery called Liberté, near the Gare de l'Est, um, uh, wearing a lot of uh, clothes from uh, Relique, I guess. <laughs> uh, actually from Humana in Spain. Uh, that's a Relique sweater, uh, this one, which I'm, that's my current favourite sweater. You can't really see it there, but it's a 70s uh, sweater. And um, let's see, this is um, getting back to, I said we would get back to Roland Barthes. This is... Um, Oh, where is it? Robert Longo. Oh, here it is. Uh, a Robert Longo photograph for uh, uh, this version of Thomas Clark's uh, uh, book of short stories, uh, The Man Who Killed Roland Barthes. And it's kind of interesting. Um, he published this collection about violent celebrity deaths, and they used this photograph, untitled Eric, um, from the series of Robert Longo's... It's actually not a photograph. It's actually a um, charcoal and graphite on paper drawing. It looks like a photograph there. 
and it's from a series called Men in the Cities, 1979 to 83. 79, the exact year when Bowie released Lodger, with a very similar uh, sonography, a very similar pose on the cover. Uh, and Bowie actually mentioned Robert Longo because he Longo also made the cover for uh, Glenn Branca's 1981 album, The Ascension. And in 2003, Bowie told Vanity Fair magazine in an interview that Ascension... This cover by Longo was the best cover art of the 80s and beyond, some would say. Bowie's own words there. So I think he was sort of giving himself a backhanded compliment. I don't know who copied who. Uh, the Lodger cover, of course, is um, a photograph by Duffy in a design uh, and concept by Derek Boschier, the British artist. Uh, the Thoughts of Goethe, the, um, this is the wreckage of the, the Sinking of the Titanic by Hans Magnus Enzersberger, the German poet. It's a 1978 epic poem about the listing and killing of the West, pointing more and more hoses, uh, says Enzersberger, at the advancing fiery lava and thus postponing, not forever perhaps, but for the time being at least, the decline of Western civilization. Open University. 